Welcome back to another Excel VBA tutorial. So in today's video, we are going to be covering the topic of slicers. So slicers are a nice interactive way where you can take a data set or even something like a pivot table and allow a user to filter the content of that pivot table based on a slicer. So as an example, I have a data set here full of uh, Pokemon cards and say I want to filter the content, but I don't want the user to, you know, go here, click the drop down, and, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. I, I really want to make it a little bit more interactive, but more importantly, I kind of want to give them cues about really what they should be filtering. So for example, you can see here that I have card rarity at the top, and maybe I want to see all of the rare cards. So now all the user has to do is simply click a button and the entire data set has now been filtered on that information. So it makes it very dynamic and very simple. Additionally, we can make slicers where they can select multiple items from the slicer. So say I want legend and then rare as well. We can also do things like, what is it? We'll do, uh, what is it? Uh, I want to do this, we'll do this, and then we can do things like hide the data and stuff like that. So we can even make it where some of this will actually gray out or kind of like white out a little bit. So that way the user knows that, hey, there's no actual um, series that contains a legend rarity besides heart gold and heart silver. So uh, slicers are really nice. They really make the data a little bit more interactive and we can customize slicers to fit the style of a workbook and even change their overall layout. So we're gonna see how to work with slicers using VBA. I will let you know right now, there seems to be one bug related to slicers. So please keep an eye out for that when we get to that section. I have yet to understand why it's happening, but there is one little bug when it comes to actually working with it in VBA. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna to go to our developer tab. And then from here, we're gonna to go to our visual basic icon. We're gonna click it. And then from here, we wanna insert a new module. So right here, you're gonna right click, go down to insert and then module. And so now we have a new module. We probably should give our module name so we know what's in there. So we'll call it working with slicers. And for you guys, that's okay. But for me, I already have a module that contains that name. So I'm gonna give it another little added component to it. And from here, we can now create a subroutine inside of our module. So I'm gonna create a new subroutine called working with slicers. And just like that, we now have a new subroutine and we're gonna start the process of declaring our variables. FYI, there are quite a few, so bear with me as we kind of go through this process, but a lot of them are pretty repetitive. So the first thing is we're gonna write our little comment. So declare our variables. Then from here, we're gonna declare our application object as an application. So we're gonna call it Excel app. That represents an application object. In other words, it represents the Excel application. We will need to grab our active book at different points. And so here we're gonna create a new object variable called Excel active book. This represents a workbook object. Now this is going to be the content of basically the workbook we're working with, but basically it's the one that we're currently in. Additionally, we will need to access a sheet as well. So we're going to create a new variable called Excel active sheet. This represents a worksheet object in my workbook. Additionally, our data is currently in a list object and we're going to be needing to grab that list object at different points in order to create our slicer. So it's probably a good idea to have an object variable representing that list object. So we'll create a new object variable called Excel Pokemon table. This represents a list object. So that data table you saw on the worksheet. Okay, so now we're gonna start getting into the actual specific slicer objects. Slicers, for the most part, you need to think about two different things. You have a slicer and you have a slicer cache. This is very similar to other objects we've worked with in the past. For example, a pivot table you have a cache, which is basically like an in-memory data set that allows you to quickly and efficiently calculate a bunch of different metrics. The same type of logic applies here. We're gonna have an in-memory data cache 
that represents the values inside of our particular slicer. And so once you have that cache, then we can create a slicer object. So that's the actual object that you interact with on the worksheet. So let's declare that. We'll say dim Excel Pokemon slicers. This will rep represent the slicers collection. So we can have multiple slicers in our workbook. So this represents a slicers collection. We will see that a slicers collection is found at a slicer cache level. So you can have multiple slicers that belong to the same slicer cache. From here, we're gonna also create another one called Pokemon Slicers uh, Slicer. We just wanna sync one. So this one's going to be our actual slicer object. So this at the actual slicer we're interacting with. And then from here, um, we're going to declare a few more for this one. So we're going to call this dim Excel Pokemon slicers caches. This will represent a slicer caches. You can see here there's slicer items, slicer pivot tables, slicer cache levels. We're not going to cover those specific ones in this video. We will talk a little bit about slicer items just because if we want to filter it, we kind of have to go there. OK, so we'll grab our slicer caches. And then from here, Excel Pokemon slicers and then cache. And then we'll do this one as a single cache in our collections of caches. OK, and then from here, we're going to declare even more caches and slicer objects. The reason why is we want a slicer for multiple columns inside of my table. And when we do this, we have to have an object for each one of those fields that I want to create a slicer for. So if I want to create one for four different columns, guess what? You're going to have to create four different slicer caches. OK, and then from here, we're going to do Excel Pokemon set slicer cache. This is, again, going to be another slicer cache. In fact, the next three are going to be all caches. So I'm just going to basically <laughs> copy it over and over again. And we're going to just change a couple of different things about it. So we're going to have one for set, one for name, one for series, and then one for rarity. So if you want to see the rarity of a card. And then from here, we're going to basically do the same exact thing, but now it's going to be all slicers and not a cache. So very similar to what we were doing up above, but now we're just making the specific slicers. OK, so we're just going to grab this, delete all those cache keywords so that way we can easily reference them inside of our code. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it looks like a lot, but you can see it's a very repetitive process and it's all pretty much the same exact objects. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the application. This represents the actual uh, Excel application. So we're going to set our Excel app object variable equal to the application itself. This represents, again, the Excel application. I'm going to give myself some space so you guys can all see it. Then from here, we're going to grab the active book. I'm going to be a little bit misleading here. I'm going to set the Excel active book equal to Excel app. And then there is a this workbook. This represents the workbook that houses the code that we are writing. So the one that I'm currently writing this code in, that is this workbook. Then from here, I'm going to grab this sheet. I'm going to grab this the Pokemon data sheet. And from here, it's going to be set Excel active sheet equal to Excel active book dot worksheet. So the worksheets collections, all the worksheets in the book. And then from here, we're going to do the Pokemon data sheet. So the sheet that contains that list object that I want to grab. Additionally, from here, I'm going to grab the Pokemon card series list object. Again, this represents this table right here. If you go to table design, you will notice that I gave it a name called card series. This is how I'm going to reference it. I'm going to use that as my key to reference it. So I'm going to set that Excel Pokemon table equal to Excel active sheet. I'm going to the list objects collection, and then I'm going to reference the name of that table. And at this point, we've pretty much done everything when it comes to referencing 
the objects we need. The next thing I'm gonna do is I do have some slicers currently on my worksheet. So I'm gonna show you how to loop through those collections and just grab the name from them. So this is kind of just, you know, kicking things off and getting us comfortable grabbing the components we need. So in order to do that, we're gonna first grab the slicer caches and then we're gonna loop through that collection. So grab the slicer caches in the active book. So I'm going to set the Excel Pokemon slicer caches equal to Excel active. And I'm gonna do my little trick here, active book. And you'll notice there is a slicer caches collection. So this represents all the slicer caches inside of this workbook. If I wanna loop through it, so loop through each slicer cache. How do I do that? I'm gonna say for each Excel Pokemon slicer cache in Excel Pokemon slicer caches, the collection, do something with it. So go to the next one, go to the next one, whatever we're gonna do. In this situation, I'm gonna be very simple. I'm just gonna say print out that Pokemon slicer cache dot name. So see right here, I just press control J, nothing's coming up. That to me is automatically telling me I misspelled something. So I am guessing it's probably because I didn't add an extra S in there, which I tend to do. It's a nice little trick for yourself. I do this a lot. So ever, whenever I go here and I'm doing control J and I'm not seeing anything pop up, more than likely I misspelled something. So in this situation, I'm gonna grab that name of the slicer and let's start looping through it. We can see that we do have a couple slicers. Uh, do keep in mind when you do create a slicer by default, Microsoft will add the keyword slicer in front of it an underscore and then the name of the field that you're creating for that slicer. So just a little bit of an FYI, if you don't specify a name when you create a slicer cache, it will automatically create one for you. And we see this with a lot of other objects like pivot tables, uh, list objects, and so on and so on. So this isn't anything new, but it is important to be aware of it. Just so you're, you know, if you need to change it, you can change it. Okay, then from here, um, I think, how long are we into this? Okay, so. We'll get just started on it. Uh, we will create a cache. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a slicer cache for the name column in my table. Keep in mind, <laughs> there is a bug. Nice, all uppercase. We will talk about it in a second. So set. Excel Pokemon name slicer cache equal. I'm going to go into my Pokemon slicers cache collection. Uh, and then I'm going to do an add to source. You cannot use keywords here. I don't know why, but it's a bug. If you do source, and then you actually do the name or the object as the argument, it seems to cause a bug. So what I've been telling people to do is just put in the arguments, just don't reference them. The first argument is the data source. In this situation, it's going to be a list object. So that Pokemon table that we defined up above, that's gonna be our source. The source field is the column name from that table that you wanna use as your source. In this case, it's gonna be the name column. And then the name, the, well, I guess the, the actual name argument represents the name of the slicer cache. So I'm gonna call this uh, slicer cache name. Just like that, we're good. Now I'm gonna show it to you just so you can see what happens. If I do source, if I do source field, And if I do name, we get this. So I'm not sure why, uh, even when I looked on the documentation, something that kind of stood out to me is there is no add to method <laughs> that seems to exist for slicer caches. There's an add method. And so my guess is this is probably something that was changed after the fact to maybe 
you know, re respond to a new feature in Excel. That's usually when you see these add to methods is they're trying to add the functionality to VBA because some type of new feature was added. Um, I'm guessing probably when they added this feature, there might have been some type of bug or issue where the named arguments were not passed through. So if you try to pass them through, it doesn't know what you're trying to do. Uh, even more difficult is if you do add, it still seems to do the same exact thing. So the documentation is a little bit misleading on this method. There doesn't seem to be an add. There seems to be an add to. And more specifically for the add to, you cannot pass through named arguments. So be aware of that bug. It confused the heck out of me. When I did the macro recorder, it seemed to work fine, but it was interesting. I did kind of catch it. I said, oh, that's odd. It's not doing any type of named arguments or anything like that. So that kind of raised my eyebrows a little bit because I'm going, hmm, this could be an issue. But do be aware of this. It can create a situation where you might get an error. Now, with that being said, I'm going to cut off the video. And in our next video, we're going to continue our exploration of slicers. We're going to create a few more and then we're going to start going through the process of formatting those slicers and even doing things like selecting items. So that way we can set the value and also positioning a little bit of that, too. OK, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you in video number two.